My name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Today we've got a great video for you on how to increase your racket head speed on your backhand. We see lots of videos like that for the serve, how to increase racket head speed on your serve, on your forehand, but not too many for the backhand. So if you're looking for that, this is the video for you. In fact, if you're looking for the best backhand training on the internet, I got something even better than this video. It's my seven day backhand challenge. It's absolutely free to sign up. You get 48 hour free access to it. So go to 7daybackhandchallenge.com, sign up today because we're getting started on May 24th. So hopefully you'll get in on time. And uh, let's get into this video with drill number one. Okay, drill number one. Whether you have a one-hander or a two-hander, you're gonna do the same things. I'll, I'll demo both as much as I can, uh, but my one-hander at this point, even though I play juniors and college with a two-hander, just goes to show if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, my one-hander at this point is, is much better. So, what I want you to do first of all is we're not gonna be hitting balls to start. We want to really start to feel how we're gonna use the kinetic chain and build the momentum from the ground up into our swing. So the first thing I want you to do is actually just feel your weight go back. A lot of players when they go to hit a ball hard at the rec level don't get enough of the backward momentum first. You know you don't see a pro, right, let's just take it on the forehand side, you don't see a pro see a ball and just go like this and try and accelerate. What do you see them do first? They move back first. They, they load up and then they crush into the ball. So we're going to work on doing the same thing. We're going to really feel the backward momentum backward, but we're not going to be hitting off our back foot and waiting. No, what we're going to do is we're going to load up and then be aggressive and go in and really feel that racket head going through it. We want to feel that we're loose. So you can even just start off just kind of like being really loosey-goosey with it, okay, and relax and don't even worry if it's as fast as you can hit. Just trying to be loose and feel that backward and forward momentum into it. If you've got a two-hander, it's the same thing, backward, forward momentum into the shot. Uh, we'll show you some from the side and then I want you to see the sound that you're making off of your racket and how relaxed and loose do you feel. Here we go guys, we want to do about 50 to 100 reps of this, just coming here and backward forward and really feeling that weight dig in and then just let it go. Being loose, let the momentum go through. See if you can hear it. Can you hear the wind going through? the ball. Okay, so just doing that over and over again, really feeling that momentum. You got a two-hander, same, same thing, seeing how much wind you can create. We still want good technique as we're hitting this shot, and uh, that's what we're going to do before we start hitting balls. Let's go to exercise number two to increase your racket head speed. Okay, so right now we have exercise number two and three in our hand right here. I've got a racket that has no strings in it. This is from on court, off court. This actually also helps you really feel that snap into the ball. Um, but one of the things that we tend to do, why am I doing this? One of the things we tend to do as tennis players is we brace for impact. We tend to decelerate and slow down because we want to make the shot. So we, we're getting brave, we're getting brave, we're getting brave, and then we hold back our shot. Have you ever done that before? Well this, we're just going to be hitting through the ball. Actually, it's even better if you don't even have a bar here because sometimes I might hit the bar, but I obviously have no expectations of hitting the ball in. I don't worry about hitting the ball in. All I'm going to worry about is relaxing and accelerating. I'll hear that snap in the racket. So you can come here and you know if you ever break a string, just take all the strings out of your racket and use it uh, as something where you can really work on this, where you have a ball, you can even do this with the ball machine coming at you, but you're here getting set and just ripping through the ball. Oh my gosh, I wish I had that on video because the crazy thing was I actually hit a beautiful cross-court backhand just then. It was, it was perfect. But uh, maybe it's because I just didn't even, you know, have any expectations there that I was able to make a shot with the bar. That was incredible. I wish I had the camera from the back view. But anyway, you get the idea. We're just getting here and we're just ripping through the shot. Again, we're making pretty good contact with the Okay, so the next exercise, drill number three to increase our racket head speed on our back end is now we're going to combine the two. So you take your racket that either has no strings or your snap racket and you're going to accelerate and go through it and then immediately you're going to pick up your other racket and hit. So I'm just going to put it here against the tripod, come get it and try and 
get those two shots in as close amount of time as possible and uh, just try and make it feel like the same exact swing. So I'm gonna come here, again, no expectation to make the shot, just coming here and hitting through, going okay, felt that, come back, get my regular racket, and just accelerate through the ball, okay? And just do that over and over again, switching between the two rackets until both swings feel the same. Then you know that you're swinging with freedom. Okay, drill number four, I did this with Garrett Vincent. He's a high performance coach here at Windy Hill. Great club, if you're in the area, you should definitely check out their junior program. And I love to do this one for just freedom, racket head speed. And you could, again, doesn't matter if you're doing a one hander or two hander, but throwing it to him in the air where he could then just practice crushing that ball out of the air. And again, no real expectation that the ball has to go in. Just being free with your swing, this is a great way to increase that racket head speed and build up your confidence and timing. Okay, your fifth drill, last but not least, to increase that racket at speed on your backhand. I did this with Nathan Pasha, who played for the Georgia Bulldogs. He's out there on the tour right now, trying to make it on the doubles tour. And you'll notice a lot of pros do this drill, where the coach is there quick feeding, okay? You can do it stationary, where you're just feeding one ball after the next. It's really forcing the player to increase their racket head speed to keep up with the pro's feed. Uh, you can also bring your student forward, so you can practice going forward and do it at the same time. Again, it's really going to quicken up your racket head speed to keep up with the coach feeding and also as the ball gets shorter in the court, you got to have faster racket head speed to snap it up and down the court. Hey Nathan, so this is your third drill that you like to use for your hands. Yeah. Set me up on this one. So, so the great thing about this drill is when you start at the baseline, you have to hit more of a longer, heavier drive spin that goes through the court. And then as you get closer, you have to add tighter and tighter spin so the ball doesn't go out because you obviously get uh, closer uh, to the net inside the court and you have to add more spin to dip the ball down before it goes out. All right, let's do it. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Good, try it one more time. Is that good feeds right there? Great, great. You can keep even a little lower. Even a little lower, ready, go. Good. Perfect. Great job. And this is a great drill for your forehand or your backhand, by the way. And those are your five drills to increase your racket head speed on your backhand. Now, if you love this, then you're really going to love our seven-day backhand challenge. And I'm going to play a commercial for it right now. If the commercial inspires you and, think, and you think it's a good idea to work on your backhand, then definitely sign up. Go to 7daybackhandchallenge.com, and we'll see you on May 24th. It's time to develop a backhand with massive spin and power without having to give up accuracy or consistency and without having to spend hours and hours on the court every day for the rest of your life and without having to spend thousands of dollars on lessons that just don't work. My name is Peter Freeman and I'm the founder of Crunch Time Coaching. You may have seen my videos on YouTube where I have over 10 million views. Or maybe you've seen me interview the great Rick Macy, Gigi Fernandez, or Rod Laver with my tennis con event that features the very best coaches in the world in an effort to take your game to the next level. When you enroll in my challenge, you're going to unlock $1,068 worth of value. Your challenge includes a 7-day step-by-step -step video coaching system 
a perfect practice plan, drill sheets, and live coaching and support. Plus, I'm throwing in a free bonus, my very best backhand lessons